The biggest cow health concern for any New Zealand dairy farmer is mastitis. There are two types, Staph aureus and Strep uberus. Both are highly infectious and easily transmitted from milking cups to hands in the shed, and in the case of Strep uberus can also be picked up in the paddock. Clinical mastitis is identified by visible signs of infection. Subclinical mastitis is much harder to detect. This is when the somatic cell count has increased as an immune response to infection, but there are no visible signs. Early detection helps minimise infection to other cows, improves cure rates and lessens the risk of grave. Automated mastitis detection is changing the way mastitis is managed. There are several sensor-based options currently on the market, and each use different methods to detect mastitis symptoms. We're going to look at a system that uses a combination of measurements, including high-frequency conductivity, milk-out pattern, temperature, and other operational measures in a rotary shed. When Richard Pearce took on the role of manager at Grage and Farm, he was new to automation in the dairy shed. A year down the track, he and his partner Susan received a Vet Life Award for the second lowest cell count in the South Island and won the New Zealand Farm Manager of the Year Award. Daily milking practices for us, we have three herds that we run on this farm. Our first herd which comes in uh, first is our young cows which are our two year old and our three year old cows. The reason we have these cows is because um, they are naturally lower in somatic cell count and less prone to mastitis as opposed to the old girls. So we bring them in, milk them first so there is less chance of infection through the cups. Our second herd is our bigger and older cows. We run these cows together obviously for the same reason as these are the cows that can be prone to a bit more having high cell count or having infections in their udder. So we milk them second. And then our third herd finally, which we always bring in last, are all of our penicillin cows and we're just tailing off the last of spring now, so the last of our colostrum cows are in there. These are milk last for two reasons. One is we don't want that milk in the vat. And the second reason is these are the main at-risk cows for mastitis. Being a red herd, that's where our mastitis cows are. And also colostrums, being fresh calvers, they naturally have a higher cell count, so we make sure they get milk last. So as the cows come onto the platform, the person that cups on, who's cupping up, will always be checking the milk hub screen. And we have a set aside a designated group that we do on milk hub that we test every day. Um, and these are our cows that are above a set ratio for the mastitis treatments. Um, also, all staff are always looking for swollen or abnormal quarters um, or cows that are kicky because they might be painful as well. Uh, these cows will be stripped out and checked uh, every quarter and also if we think we need to, we um, RMT them or spray them up orange as well just so that everyone in the shed knows to keep an eye on this cow. After milking, we'll come in and sit down on the computer and check our mastitis ratios. So when we open up our MyHub page, we have our mastitis ratios sitting there for everyone to see so that anyone can come and check it. What I mean by mastitis ratios is this figure here. What this figure does is it ranks that cow against every other cow in the herd. So if one was a perfect cow, this cow is sitting at 1.75. We know she has a high mastitis ratio, so she, she is one of the cows we want to have a really good look at and it decreases as we go down the list. The other number we're really looking at closely is the prime mastitis, which is another figure Milk Hub gives us. What this does is it ranks that cow against her previous Another tool we use is the histogram of the whole herd. What this does is it ranks every cow in a bar graph so we can see our higher end and also our lower end of cows and this gives us a good indication of where we should be looking for the cows at the top end and how many we want to check each milking. From the graph here you can see a cow we've recently pulled out with mastitis. Just before she's had a high mastitis ratio her production's dropped down. She's then spiked on her mastitis ratio and while we've treated her she's leveled off. Dropped down at the end of treatment and in correlation with that you can see as we picked up on the mastitis her production has also increased again. If our cell count is increasing on our tanker docket and we want to check some cows, we'll come to the computer, we'll select our top 20 highest cows on the mastitis ratio, and then we'll then set up an in-shed alert for those cows so that when they come on the platform it'll beep and the staff know that we need to strip these cows out and check them. Vigilance and a clear plan of action are crucial to successful mastitis management. There are significant benefits to be gained from employing new technologies such as automated mastitis detection. 
it becomes much easier to stay on top of mastitis so you can achieve the very best results from your herd.